Okay, so uh, it's 1 p.m. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to Drisha. This is the second class in the series Kili Haaretz, Changes in uh, Meaning of the Holy Place and Zionism in Heschel's Thoughts. We encourage you to uh, turn on your video if you're able to. Uh, also understand if you can, but it's just nice to uh, see faces and feel like we're together in uh, class. Uh, also, you can uh, feel free to ask questions during class, uh, either by uh, writing them as a comment um, here in the chat box on Zoom, or you can simply unmute and uh, verbally ask the questions uh, as they come up. Um, this series uh, explores uh, Shemitah's social laws that reflect uh, a deep religious uh, attitude to the Holy Land. Since the rise of Zionism, this term has taken on political implications, which caused Abraham Joshua Heschel to change his mind time and again about its meaning. In this course, we will consider the very Evie? Yeah. <laughs> Evie. Uh -huh. The last, your last sentences were omitted. We, we can't hear Oh, you. Did, you, I, was I glitchy? Oh no, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. I don't I don't know uh, what happened. Okay. Well, I was don't just Don't do it again. <laughs> of course. Okay, I'll try my best. So yeah, I was just introduce reintroducing the class again. It looks like the people here uh, were here last week, so maybe I don't need to repeat that part uh, one more time. Uh, just uh, maybe a couple more words um, about uh, Dr. Abandi, uh, who's uh, dedicated to bringing Ab Abraham uh, Joshua Heschel's thought to Israel and translating his words into Hebrew and transforming Israel by his spirit. Uh, and uh, I guess with that, I'll just uh, turn this to you, Dr. Abandi, okay? Thank you. How are you? Shalom, everyone. Um, are you a few few words about our last lesson um, I'm sure you you remember but um, le let's say it again in in our last lesson I tried to show tried to show um, how Eschel contradicted between time and space in his book the Sabbath and how it is part of his critical approach to Zionism uh, to say on 14, 49, on 51, on 55, that uh, Judaism is not about space, uh, it is not a Zionist saying. Uh, to say that um, to be a Jew is to be connected to uh, God, the Torah, and uh, the people of Israel without mention uh, the land of Israel, without mention one time in his book, which subtitled uh, Philosophy of Judaism, yes, God in Search of Man, God in Search of Man, the Philosophy of Judaism, in this book, yes, on your desk, Ruth, right? This is the book. <laughs> he didn't mention, thank you, he didn't mention in this work uh, the very name, the state of Israel, on 55 in a book uh, about the about philosophy of Judaism. And I try to, to show how Heschel uh, reads the Psukim of Shemitah from Vaikra uh, 25, uh, which, which taught us, which taught us that um, in every seven years, we will ce celebrate the time. We will leave the land. We will remember that the earth is the Lord's and not of us. And uh, this, wa this was our last lesson. Today, I want to show you how I should change this mind for the first time. In our next lesson, I will show how he changed his mind another time. Uh, the first change happened when he, after when he came to Israel for his first visit uh, in 1957. Uh, it was the 10th year of the state of Israel, 
and the World Zionist Organization uh, arranged a huge uh, conference and invited Heschel to be one of the speakers. The visit includes included a month of, uh, how do you call it today, uh, rebirth uh, in Israel. <laughs> and Heschel uh, traveled uh, all this, the new state of Israel and met a lot of people and he changed his mind. He spoke about it in, in, a, in, a, in a Hebrew speech in the conference and uh, it translated this speech into English and published it uh, for the American jury. And a year, um, several months after this visit, he had another speech to the rabbinical assembly of the conservative mo movement in which he uh, reflected about his visit in, is in Israel and again uh, expressed his new Zionist approach. Let's, let's see the text, but today I want to start from other psukim about Shemitah and only then continue to Heschel. Um, the psukim of, for today is psukim which um, I believe that in a lot of discussions about Shemitah, uh, people uh, didn't mention this psukim. It's from Vaikra uh, 26, the next chapter of the psukim which we saw last time. Um, let's let's read. Let's read. Uh, who is our first reader for today? Anyone want to? To, who, want, who wants to be our first reader of the psukim from Leviticus? Judith, thank you. Please open your... Oh, you. Yeah. And you I will scatter among the nations. Then shall the land make up for its sabbatical years throughout the time that it is desolate and you are in the land of your enemies. Then shall the land rest and make up for its Sabbath years. Throughout the time that it is desolate, I shall observe the rest that it did not observe in your Sabbath years while you were dwelling upon it. For the land shall be forsaken of them, making up for its Sabbath years by being desolate of them while they atone for their iniquity. Yet even then, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them or spurn them so as to destroy them, annulling my covenant with them. For I, the Lord, am their God. Thank you. As you can see, the book of Vaikra um, um, uh, include a prophecy about uh, diaspora, about Galut. I, I believe it is very dare saying to say, you know, one day our state will, uh, will over, our enemies will uh, win us, God will scatter us among the nations. I don't know if someone uh, here in Israel or in the US uh, would write such sentences about his nation, but in the Torah, the prophets before, yes, this text, part of this text of the Torah, at least were written before, um, before the first Galut in Babel, in Babylon, and uh, Sefer Vaikra, the book of Vaikra, uh, believe that this galut, this diaspora, is a punishment of and because the Shemitah. Because you uh, didn't observe 
the Shemitah, because you didn't let the land to observe its, its or her uh, Sabbath, uh, the land will need to observe uh, her Sabbath, Sabbath Sabbaths, uh, all the years that you will be in the Galut. Yes, when you uh, were uh, in the land, the land of Israel, God told you to let the land uh, observe her Shabbat every seven years, and you didn't let her, so you will go from here, and the land can save her, can observe her uh, Shabbat with God, and when you will not uh, interrupt, inter interrupt them. Yes, it's a very, uh, I believe, surprised Psukim. Yes, the land is a person, yes, and it's need her rest. But for today, I, I want to, to stress here the meaning of the Galut, yes, the, 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 the diaspora as a punishment. Yes, if you remember our last lesson, Heschel spoke about the Eastern Europe, a Jew, as a Jew of Eastern Europe, as an ideal. And he spoke about the holy place of the Mishkan uh, as something that God had to do only because uh, the golden calf. Yes, you remember. And, and now in this, in this psukim, as the Torah says that no, you should be here, but you will go from here as a punishment. And until now we didn't saw in Heschel's text, this understanding. He spoke about diaspora, the diaspora Jew as an ideal Jew. What, uh, how can he, it's a question, how can he say, such saying after the Holocaust, but uh, maybe because his crit critical sayings about Zionism, uh, he didn't didn't uh, want to to say negative things about diaspora, and he wanted to uh, picture to 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 draw the the. They ask for a Jew as an ideal. Yes, when Zionism was critical against uh, the diaspora Jews as uh, maybe non-legitimate -legit uh, Jews, Heschel wanted to say, no, we are the ideal. But what Heschel would do with, with this psukim, with this understanding of, of the galut, of the diaspora, which is so central to the Bible, to the the Tanakh. And indeed, when he came uh, to Israel in his first time, as I said before, he, he suddenly uh, felt it, he suddenly uh, understood that he had to express um, this feeling of, of Galut. Let's, let's read. Um, does someone else uh, want to read to be our next reader? Anyone? Oh, Judith. Ah, okay, Ruth, you will be the next one. We have a lot of text today. Yes, Judith, please. Let us confess there is no wholeness in the diaspora. There are sparks, but no flame individuals, but no community, schools, synagogues, but no Jewish spiritual atmosphere. Parentheses, we have Friday evening. We didn't arrive to Shabbat. Only he who has been in the land of Israel knows what the diaspora lacks. Parentheses, what is Galut? We are in dangerous of a similar, in danger of assimilation. With the establishment of the state of Israel, the whole Jewish world was filled with light. 
We shall not succeed in repairing our house in the diaspora without close relations with Israel, without the heir of the land of Israel. The diaspora Jew has not only a duty to give, but a right to receive as well. Inspiration from Zion, faith from Zion. Judaism stands on four pillars, God, Torah, the people of Israel, and the land of Israel. The loss of any one of these entails the loss of the others. One depends upon the other. Thank you. As you can see, this is a change, right? Instead of the three uh, pillars on which he spoke only two years ago, now we added another pillar, the land of Israel, and he, he, he said that you, you, you can't, you can't, um, you, you, it's, it's, it's a crucial pillar for uh, Judaism. Yes, and in, this is the, the, the second uh, paragraph, but in his first paragraph, he confess about the feeling of, of diaspora. After he came to the state of Israel, he suddenly, uh, I don't know if he felt it before, but his first expression of such feelings, and he, um, he, he said, yes, we didn't arrive to, to Sabbath, yes? Well, only six, year ago, six years ago, he spoke about, he wrote about the Sabbath as a contradiction to the state of Israel. But now he said, no, we have only Friday evening we didn't arrive to Sabbath. Yes, this sentence, uh, I put it uh, in, how do you call it? So <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, um, because uh, it's a sentence which he spoke, he, he said in Hebrew when he was in Israel, but he didn't translate it into English when he published his speech in America. This and also the next one, yes, instead of uh, saying only he who has been in the land of Israel knows what the diaspora lacks, in Hebrew he said, uh, knows what is galut, yes. You didn't understand the very experience of diaspora uh, until you come uh, to the land of Israel. It's a very harsh saying, and when he translated it in, into English, he said it uh, less harsh than in the original Hebrew. And, and, only, and also he, he omitted the saying about assimilation, uh, but I believe that he understood it, uh, understood it when he came to the state of Israel suddenly, he met the Yas people of Israel in the 50s, which were so uh, idealist, which were with a deep sense of solidarity. Yes, and suddenly look back, I, I, I believe he looked back to, to, the, yes, to the young Jews in the 50s in America. Yes, it is not the young Jews of the 60s which were his students, which he very liked, which came with him to the march with Martin Luther King, etc. The young Jews of the 50s, he predicted, will suffer from assimilation, but he didn't say it when he translated his speech into English. Yes, he, 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 know, he, he knew it is a sensitive issue for his audience in America. Um, let's, let's continue to read much more, I, I believe, a deep saying of him, deep, it, deepest, uh, deeper saying of him uh, about the meaning of history. Yes, 
when he, I, I will stress it, when he, when he spoke in, when he wrote in the Sabbath about the meaning of time, if you remember what I told last, uh, in our last lesson, he told, he spoke about the holy moment of relationship. Yes, the Sabbath is, is not part of history. It's not part of, of uh, the regular time which happened during the speed and the distance. You remember, you remember my, my, my last lesson. And now when he came to Israel, he suddenly spoke about history, about time, not as a moment, but about uh, time as, um, how do you say it? Time as a, a progress is something which happened during the history. Of course, the history of the, yes, of, of this time is very uh, unique history from which he, he almost um, ignored in our last, uh, in, in his previous books. Let's, let's read, maybe Ruth, can you, Ruth, can you help us here? Thank you. Since the day the temple was destroyed, there has been no age like ours. It is as if God had rolled up all Jewish history and placed it under our heads. What is the meaning of all this? What is the import of this hour? And where is the thinking of our day? The Torah which God gave to Moses was white fire engraved with black fire. And this is the image of the events we experienced the white fire of the upbuilding of Israel engraved with the black fire of ruin and disaster. The, flyer, the fire conceived and bore light, deaf to the cries out of the flames. We, who will understand the signs of birth? Please continue. The parchments are consumed, but the letters soar aloft. The return to Zion we had dared to yearn for is actually taking place. This was wrought by the Almighty, and who shall say there is nothing new under the sun? Yet the heart does not comprehend what the eyes behold. We have not grasped the marvel. We have not felt the mystery. We are powerless to speak, to illumine our lives in the light of events. At times we feel as if a deep slumber had descended upon us. The visions appear to us like the words of a sealed enigmatic book. Some of us shake our heads at all this and say, there is no wonder in the creation of Israel, no mystery, no marvel. Let's continue. Dark and, yeah. Dark and dreadful would be our life today without the comfort and the joy that radiate out of the land of Israel. Crippled is our people, many of its limbs chopped off, some of its vital organs torn out. How strange to be alive, how great is our power to forget. Like a flashlight in the darkness of history came the state of Israel. It is a haven of refuge for those in despair who cried for a sign that God is not forever estranged from the world of history. Ours is the task of putting together the letters which hovered over Majdanek and Auschwitz with the letters with which Zion and Jerusalem are being built. Thank you so much. It's a very, I believe, deep, sayings of Herschel, which stood in front of his history, who dared to, 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 to look at the meaning of the Holocaust and the meaning of the establishment of the state of Israel. And in the same time, he felt the darkness of the Holocaust and only the light, the light of the state of Israel um, enable him to look at the darkness of the Holocaust. Yes, as you know, he, he, his mother and three sisters were murdered by the Nazis. And I believe maybe thousands of people which he knew were murdered. Yes, he grew up in also, he, he went to, to high school in Vilna and then to university in Berlin. 
and all these places were were not were destroyed by the Nazis, and it's this thick darkness. He couldn't look at it. It 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 it, it broke his his uh, his spirit, and only now when he suddenly understood the the light of the state of Israel, he can he can he can suffer. He can he can carry the meaning of the Holocaust. We need to to hold it together, the darkness and the light, in order to enable us to to look at the history of the meaning of history. Don't escape to the Sabbath. Don't escape to the holy moment. You have to look at you as an event at the events of your time. Yes, I, I, I feel as if he, he, he spoke to himself, especially when he said, "Yes, uh, uh, some of us shake our heads at all this and say there is no wonder in the creation of Israel." <laughs> It, it's about himself, right? Yes, he he he, he was the, the 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 one who who didn't uh, see um, the wonder of the state of Israel. He was the one who say, if I should should uh, choose between the wilderness and and God uh, between wonder uh, the wilderness and the angel. I prefer to stay in the wilderness instead of go to the state of Israel. Yes, this was the clue. Yes, and now he said, oh, I, yes, he, he didn't say I, but I believe he spoke about himself. I was, I was, yes, maybe, maybe I was diff. Why I was diff? Yes, because the, because the flames are afraid to look in the history. And uh, now the birth helped me, helped me to look in the same time to the darkness, into the light. Yes, uh, it's a change. It's not the same Heschel which we read, which we read in, in, in our last lesson. And something happened to him in his visit in Israel. Um, I believe that in his next uh, speech, he, when he reflected about his visit, he ex explained it more explicitly in, in more explicit words uh, what happened to him in his visit. Um, does someone want to read? Maybe Noah, if you want. Thank you. Israel and Diaspora. Yes. Heschel's speech uh, to the Rabbinical Assembly in 1958. A mysterious relationship obtains between the Jewish people and the Jewish land, which remained throughout the ages a challenge to the Jews. It is an integral part of our destiny and our God's vision of the Messianic kingdom. One cannot detach himself from the land without forfeiting one's position within the covenant. The political and economic realities of the state must not be allowed to obscure the mysterious relationship. That mysterious relationship. Please continue. The roots of our attachment to Israel lie in the spiritual depth of our existence, in the depth of prayer, of memory, of involvement in the Jewish tradition. What will be the relationship of the future generations of American Jews to Israel, the land? How will Israel, the land, remain vital and precious to the American Jew a hundred years from now? One cannot be a Jew except as a part of the Jewish people, but there is no Jewish people without God and Torah. Judaism is neither an experience nor a creed, neither the possession of psychic traits nor the acceptance of a theological doctrine, but the living in a holy dimension, in a spiritual order, living in the covenant with God. Love of Israel embraces not only the Jews of the present, but also those of the past and those of the future. It is not flag waving. 
It is the ability to listen to the voice of the prophet. It is our being involved in the wrestling of the great sages for the right understanding of the will of God. Thank you. Thank you. So in this opening to the rabbinical assembly, I, I feel that Heschel uh, wants his audience to, to understand that he, he is he is, he is a diaspora Jew, yes? Uh, indeed, indeed, one cannot detach, detach, detach himself from the land of Israel, but there are political and economic realities of the state that are not easy for him, yes? Uh, he hinted here, yes? Though there are political and economic realities in the state of Israel, which I don't, uh, I don't like. No, you, you, we can't, we can't detach our, our, ourselves from the land. Uh, but then he added that there is uh, a danger. Yes, the Jews, the Jews, the Jewish community of America. Uh, Will will feel problems uh, to to uh, with the state of Israel if the state of Israel will uh, will uh, uh, will leave God yes if the state of Israel will detach itself from God in order that the American Jews um, the future generations of the American Jews. Uh, will stay in connection with the state of Israel, the state of Israel shouldn't uh, detach itself from God. Yes, he, he, who is a Jew? Who is a Jew? You know that the law in Israel uh, define, defines the, a Jew as someone who one of his four uh, grandfathers and mothers, grandfather and grandmothers, uh, was uh, born as a Jew. Yes, this is uh, uh, yes a, a, a law, a law in the, in the state of Israel. But Heschel said no. The future generations of the American Jews, uh, maybe because part of them uh, will not be uh, uh, with uh, one of four fathers. Yes. Of, of uh, yes, it it will be much complicated for the future of the American Jews to be connected to the state of Israel if the state of Israel will become a European national state. No, the part of the Jew of Judaism, essential part of Judaism, the essence of Judaism is the covenant between the people and God. And he 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 said to his audience to the rabbinical assembly, uh, yes, uh, we can't detach ourselves from the land, but of course, yes, it's not, it is not flag waving. Yes, uh, we, God will have to be part of our connection to the state of Israel. And of course, when Heschel said God, he didn't, uh, Imagine halachic person. Yes, Heschel, Heschel's God is the universal God, God of Tikkun Olam, the God who marched with Martin Luther King and uh, pro protested against uh, the, the, the war in Vietnam. Yes, this is Heschel's God. And uh, he said to his audience, of course, of course. Uh, we can't let this, the Jewish state uh, forfeit, forfeit God. Yes, uh, but and then then he continue, and he uh, 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 he said it as the duty of the American jury to to save the state of Israel to contribute to the state of Israel. Uh, with, uh, with this understanding of Tikkun Olam, with this understanding of God, 
let's 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 read the the sent the next paragraphs in which you said it. Any, anyone? Anyone wants to read? Um, I'll continue. Yes. Oh, thank you. Like, there are three. There are there are three ways of aiding the state of Israel. First, to lend financial and political help the utmost of our ability. Second, to dwell in the land of Israel. The state of Israel is not only an inspiration, but also an embarrassment. One feels abashed at the thought of being a distant spectator, while the most dramatic act of building and defending the land is being enacted by others. We have the flesh pots. They watch the borders. The shame of being absent is a new and urgent theme for Jewish apologetics. Please continue. Okay. There is a third way of aiding the state of Israel, which is, in a sense, an answer to the embarrassment I just mentioned, to bring about an inner spiritual and cultural aliyah of the soil of on the soil of America. The discovery I made in Israel was that, preoccupied as the people are with political and economic problems, there is a great searching and groping for a way of returning to God. It is present among the uncommitted and the official representatives of religion are unable to cope with it. Soldiers complain that the chaplains are concerned with the problems of dietary laws in the kitchen, rather than with the questions of the mind and the longings of the heart. A wide gulf separates the guardians and the uncommitted. A major root of the tragedy in our living by halakha lies in our detachment from the intellectual, moral, and spiritual teachings of Judaism. Unless we learn how to think as Jews, we will never be able to find meaning in the observance of halakha, whether all or only parts of it. There is another paragraph. We must not accept the present state of Judaism as final. We must not fail in the vital experiment of the making of the modern Jew. The love of Zion was only a dream, a prayer, and a vision. Yet the power of dedication turned the dream into a reality. Creative Judaism in America is only a dream, but wisdom, a prayer, and the power of dedication may turn it into a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I, I, yes. What? You write so beautifully. It's just so powerful. Yes. Thank you. Indeed. And yes, and and. Yes, in, in, in this, I believe it's a very interesting paragraph, yes, in which Heschel spoke about what happened to him in Israel and what he understood about the importance of, re, of the relationships, it, of the relationship between the American Jewry and the Jews in Israel, in the, in the state of Israel, yes. Um, he met Israeli soldiers, And they were surprised him. They they surprised him. Yes, he, you know the Israeli young people in the fifties. You only can imagine. Yes, they were educated. They were uh, moral with moral uh, um, inspiration, and he was he was surprised to see that there was a spiritual uh, thirst yes, in, in Israel. He, uh, yes, he, maybe he re read some Zionist author, some Zionist philosopher, which spoke about, which wrote about the new Jew of Israel, which, uh, Stem stems out of the land instead of the heaven, yes. But when he came to Israel, he met young Israelis with spiritual, um, with spiritual needs, deep spiritual needs, and he suddenly understood that maybe this is the task of the American Jewry. Yes, we are couple. They indeed, uh, yes, uh, 
watch the borders, but they need us to, br to bring them spiritual and moral uh, thoughts. And, and this is a new understanding of the relation relationship between the two, the two communities. We didn't, it's, it's of, Heschel expresses here feelings of uh, embarrassment, but, the, but the, solu the solution to this problem is the responsibility which American uh, Jews should uh, feel and should act in order, uh, in order to, to bring God to the state of Israel to bring Tikkun Olam to the state of Israel. Not only Aliyah, a physical Aliyah, but a spiritual Aliyah on the soil, yes, on the soil of America. And well, of course, Heschel wrote a lot of times, and spoke a lot of times about, uh, about to the com uh, Jewish, Jewish communities in America, uh, try to say to to tell the, the American jury that they have to be like the Eastern Europe Eastern uh, European Jews. Yes, but but now we suddenly understood that maybe the connection between uh, the American jury and the state of Israel will be another catalyst. How do you say it? Uh, another drive for the American uh, Jews to, uh, to understand their task, their mission, their spiritual and moral uh, mission of Tikkun Olam, not only for them, but also in order that the miracle of, of, the, of the state of Israel will, uh, will stay a miracle. In order that uh, the connection between the relationship between the American uh, Jews to the state of Israel will continue to to uh, develop, uh, there there is a responsibility of the American Jews, maybe of himself, to bring spiritual and moral understanding and thought to the state of Israel, and indeed, in these very years. He started to work on his first Hebrew book. Yes, Heavenly Torah, as you know, is Heschel's Hebrew book. Yes, and I believe that this is part of his new Zionism, from his new understanding of responsibility, in which he understood that his audience is not only the English readers, when Heschel wrote in English, he, he imagined not only the Jews, but also Martin Luther King, etc. But, but also the Jews in Israel, which his brothers, and he have to, to, to act in responsibility and to write in Hebrew to them, because we are in a mutual needs. We need them in order to enable us to look at the Holocaust. We need to see the light, the new light of God in the state of Israel. But they, the Israel, the state of Israel, the Jews in the state of Israel also need us, our inspiration, our moral understanding of God. And this is a, a new understanding of Zionism, of Heschel. And Any questions? What do you want to say? I, maybe another, another, another quote of, of about Shmita from Shmot 23, and then we will take questions and sayings. And as you know, I believe in in uh, Shmot 23, Exodus 23, there are another uh, understanding uh, of Shmita. Then we saw in our last lesson of Vaikra. Um, does someone want to read this Sukim from 
the book of Shmot. Uh, anyone? Uh, Judith, do, do, do you want do you wanted to read? Yes. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the feelings of the stranger, having yourselves been strangers in the land of Egypt. Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its yield, but in the seventh you shall let it rest and lie fallow. Let the needy among your people eat of it, and what they leave, let the wild beasts eat. You shall do the same with your vineyards and your olive groves. Six days you shall do work, but on the seventh day you shall cease from labor in order that your ox and your ass may rest and that your bondman and the stranger, I can't see below that. Can you maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. in order Thank that you. your bondman and stranger may be refreshed. Thank you. As you can see in this psukim, if I can say, there is no God. There is no God here. There is not saying about uh, the Sabbath of the land. This psukim of Shemitah, the context of this psukim of Shemitah is sayings about the strangers. Yes. Uh, Six years, you shall sow you, your land, yes? But in the seventh, there are others. Yes, this psukim of Shemitah is not religious understanding of Shemitah, but the social understanding of Shemitah. Because this is your land, you should remember there are others. There are needy, and there are strangers. Yes, is if here the Shemitah is not because the earth is the Lord's, but because there is a danger of living in your land. This Psukim expla explains, explain Shemitah as a social commandment which try to help you be more sensitive to the others. Yes, in the seventh years, in the seventh year, you will remember there are another people and, and, and even animals. animals. That oh. this is the dangers, this is the gen danger of, of holding your own land. And here the the Shemitah is a social commandment, commandment, and and I believe, yes, and this psukim uh, stressed that Israel, the land of Israel, is your land, not the land of God, but but your own land, and because this is your own land, you should remember there are others, there are strangers, and and maybe. In this period of Heschel's Zionism, he understood Israel, yes, as the land of the Jewish people. This is a, a, a unbelievable gift that we have a land, but this gift is also included danger that we forgot, we will forget the strangers, we will forget the needy, and this is the, the task of the diaspora Jews to remind, to remind the state of Israel, the moral responsibility, the, the, the moral um, commandments, social and moral commandments, uh, um, and, and not only uh, speaking about the land, the holding of the land. And this is another understanding of Shemitah. Uh, much more, there is no holy place here. This is a spoiler. The next, in, the ne in our next lesson, I will show how Heschel developed the a new thought about the holy place uh, after 67, after the war. But, but, here, but here 
there is no Israel, the land of Israel is not a holy place, but like our home, our land in which we don't feel uh, in, in the Galut. Yes. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to, to bring her, to bring her more sayings of him about what is the meaning of Galut. Maybe I will read it. I will find it in a moment. Um, I, I didn't. I, I don't see. I, I will say it uh, from my memory. He said that the meaning of the galut is when you can't speak about the human rights of uh, of the African American. This is meaning of the galut when you when you feel as a stranger and you don't dare to speak about. The moral rights of others. They, and then he said, but there is another another galut. When the IDF fear, fear, feels that he that he has to show his power in the streets of Jerusalem, this is also a galut, a spiritual galut. And there were these two galut, these two diasporas, the diaspora of the place from the home. And the diaspora from the spirit, from the moral commandments, are the two tasks of the two parts of our Judaism today. This is the new understanding of Zionism, of Heschel, in the fifth, in the in the end of the fifties. All right, uh, thank you. Let's let's take a questions and saying. Thanks. What What do you want to to share with with us or to ask? Yes, Judy. I've been rolling around in my head as you're describing this that in in some instances people simply make a distinction between the land of Israel and the state of Israel. And so that they can feel attached to the land and religiously obligated to the land, but not the state. And of course, we know political groups that feel that way. But as I was trying to apply that to Heschel's thought, it doesn't seem that black and white because he does deal with the state of Israel and its spiritual obligations. Today, but in our previous lesson, yes. I think he, he made this separation. Right. If you remember the last sentence of God in search of man, he said, uh, Jew can't, uh, the Jew can't, uh, you know, but I prefer to, to stay in the wilderness instead to go with the angel. So in, in his in his until 57, Heschel himself made such a, a separation, a distinct a distinct distinct well, uh, distinction. But um but now since 57, since his first visit, he came and experienced and it changed his mind. I believe that this is the great. This is a, this is a greatness of of philosopher that he has his own philosophy and tried to meet the, the situation and to rethink about his philosophy. And in our next les next lesson, I will I will show you another such a step a change. Uh, I see that as I worked in. Can you can you read your uh, can you read your question? Was Rabbi Heschel? Yes. Yeah, I was wondering if Rabbi Heschel was influenced, maybe if he did influence any Orthodox rabbinic thinkers. For example, you know, Rabbi Soloveitchik initially was part of the Aguda, and then joined the Mizrahi. Is there any correlation of that one or the other influencing each other and taking a more positive view, or for that matter? Initially, when Heschel was very sort of wary of Zionism, was that at all connected to the Haredi rabbis who were wary of a secular Jewish state? Thank you. Thank you. As you know, Heschel grew up in Hasidic 
uh, acidic places involved. also. Uh, he, st he studied at Yeshivat Gur in Varsha, and he was very close to uh, Admorim, yes, to Hasidic rabbis in Varsha, which, and most of them was non-Zionist, yes. And in this sense, he thought until 57 is a translation of Hasidic understanding to spiritual moral understanding. This is how I, how I saw it. And I don't think that he's changed to Zionism uh, um, came from his uh, meetings with Rabbi Soloveitchik, example. Though, uh, yes, they knew each other since they were students in Berlin and had uh, connections until they had a huge fight in the 60s. Uh, they had, they, they had, um, they, both of them were part of a, a, a small group of Jewish thinkers which tried to think what to do with the, um, the Second Vatican, how do you call it, of 65. And, but uh, in the middle of the process, Rabbi Soloveitchik uh, um, uh, spoke his famous um, speech, um, what is the name? Um, confrontation, in which he spoke against interreligious dialogue, and Heschel spoke against him, a speech against Rabbi Soloveitchik, which Heschel, Heschel, Heschel called uh, no religion is an island. There was a huge dispute between them. And since then, I think they have no connections. But Heschel's daughter told me that he wa she was very excited and grateful when Rav Soloveitchi came to the Shiva of her father to, to, and spoke to, his, to her mother and to her about how her father was important, etc. And but about Zionism, I don't I don't think it's from modern Orthodox Zionist rabbis uh, in America, um, especially because Rav Soloveitchik's Zionism is very different from Heschel's Zionism. I believe it's 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 a long it's a long story, and I can't. Uh, explain uh, Rav Soloveitchik's Zionism, but I have to say that when Rav Soloveitchik spoke, uh, spoke about him, his Zionism in his famous speech called the Deed of Fek, if you, you can find there his um, support of the, how do you say it? Nekama, yes, uh, revenge, revenge of of IDF to the Arabs, lines which Heschel couldn't agree and will will never say such lines. And uh, Rav Soloveitchik also spoke about um, the destiny. Yes, not only about uh, uh, <laughs> about. Uh, uh, um, a moral vision, but when Rav Soloveitchik spoke about moral vision, it was integrated with halacha, yes, which Heschel uh, here in the, in the 50s uh, didn't want to, to stress. Yeah, so it's not, it's not the same Zionism of Heschel and Rav Soloveitchik. We have only a minute if someone else wants to say, to ask Ruth, I see, I see that you open your mic now. So let's meet in next in our next meeting. It it will be in uh, in Heschel's yard site. Uh, Heschel was uh, was perished on uh, 23 December 23, uh, 
72, so it will be exactly 49 years from his from his death. Um, so it's a special occasion, special event. Thank you for everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vandi. Looking forward to um, uh, next week. And uh, thank you everyone who joined here uh, with us at Drisha. Uh, thanks uh, also to um, the people who uh, watched us live on Facebook and on the Drisha Live website. Um, uh, join us uh, again this Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. with the final class in the series, The Struggles of Jacob with Rabbi Silver. Uh, the class will be live stream streamed and also meet on Zoom. Uh, as because always, Rabbi Silver is here in Israel now. Oh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> I met him last week. Nice. Yay. That's great. Um, as always, you can find information about all of our class offerings also on our website at uh, www.dresha.org classes. And uh, all of the classes uh, that are live streamed are also recorded. So you can watch recordings of the classes, including this class at uh, www.dresha.org slash live. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Vandi. So good to see you again. Can't wait for next week. And uh, thank you again to everyone uh, who joined us. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you with additional classes here at Drisha. <laughs>